Welcome to the How to Write a Book podcast, the show that helps you plan, write, and publish your book, even if you're a beginner or just feel like one. Now, for your host, she's written over a dozen books and helps others bring their books to life. Here she is, Maciel. Hey, everybody, and welcome back. Welcome back to the How to Write a Book podcast. Um, I'm super excited that you're here. You are tuning in and you want to know more about writing. And we are diving hard this month into love and romance. And you all know, like, I'm a total sucker for romance. So, um, oh, yeah, we're, we're going for it. We are going for it. Um, okay, so... In this episode here, uh, we're going to be talking about why you want to write romance. Because I know there's a lot of people out there who um, they feel like the weight and the pressure of saying, well, like, I would love to write romance, but it's not a serious genre or it's not taken seriously. It's, um, you know, more of like, um, um, almost like a joke. A lot of people would consider romance. However, in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly why you should be writing romance and argument for it so that you can be like, well, yes, now I'm going to write it. So let's dive in. Okay, okay. So, um, first of all, what is romance? Um, romance is the love genre. You know, I love it. It's about two people um, falling in love, overcoming obstacles, and really um, trying to face the fears and failures and flaws within themselves so that they can be the better version of themselves. And with that usually comes some sort of tie-in with the opposing character. And it can be dramatic, it can be comedic, you know, it can really take them a lot of different ways, a lot of different adventures until they reach the end of that happily ever after. Now, you know that I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again. There is one number one rule. No, I wouldn't even call it a rule. I would call it a commandment of romance. And romance is, you can literally go all over with romance. I have seen romance about aliens, um, pregnancies, multiple people. Um, gosh, what was kind of the weirdest one that I saw recently? Um, I think it was like some sort of elven alien. And then there was like some sort of coup that was ha- happening in the government. Something like that. So anyways, the whole point is that you can go wherever you want with romance. However, you cannot break this rule. Cannot, 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 because readers will be disappointed. Um, so number one rule is happily ever after. The H-E-A. Now, what does that mean? That means that at the end of the book, there needs to be a happily ever after. There needs to be. Now, with romance, you know, typically it means that the two characters have come together. Now, in recent um, recent trends, you know, especially because we really want to empower everybody, we don't ever want to put somebody down because, you know, say they don't have a significant other. We, we don't want to say that, oh, it's like, oh, that person is less than because they don't have a significant other. No way. So I think that the romance genre is changing a little bit because of those needs. And that's important because Everyone is valuable at any stage of their life, no matter what they're going through. So um, that might be changing. But going back to the genre, um, it really is those two characters have overcome their flaws and fears and they're coming together and they're going to go off into the sunset. Now, in case you're writing a series, because you might be like, well, the characters can't come together just yet. You know, the end of the first book or the next book, the next book, if you're writing like a long series, then Every time that book ends, it should give you a hint. It should push you forward to give the reader hope. The reader must know, okay, well, if I read the next book um, or the following books or the next series of books, I know that eventually I'm going to get to the HEA. The, the most important part is that you don't end a story and those characters aren't together. Those characters have separ- separated their ways, in which case that's a different genre, actually. You're going to go into more like literature. So, um, or, you know, quote unquote literature. So that's important to know. Okay, so number one commandment. Do not break it because readers will be mad. And that's just to say the least. <laughs> so why do you want to write literature? Uh, literature? Why do you want to write romance? Because it is the literature 
of hope. Now, I didn't make that up. Nora Roberts says this, um, and I think also maybe Danielle Steele says this, um, and these are the giants of romance, you know, and a couple others who are, you know, dominating self-publishing, um, but it is the literature of hope, and I completely agree with this, um, especially because, you know, if you go to a bookstore, you could pick up a biography, um, you could pick up, um, you know, the latest dramatic New York Times best-selling uh, book, you know, but those aren't necessarily going to have hope at the end of the book. They can take you on a journey. They can take you into different worlds, totally. Um, but at the end of the book, you're not guaranteed if, you know, that person's going to have a happily ever after, if they're going to have gotten their goal. You know, it, it really could end on a different note because life is that way. Life um, doesn't always turn out the way we want it to be. But with romance, Romance allows us to dive in almost like with a safety net. It's kind of like riding a roller coaster. You know, like you go into the roller coaster, you know you're going to have the adrenaline rush. You know you're going to have a little bit of fear. You're going to be like, oh my gosh, there's that one to be top. I don't ride roller coasters as much anymore. Um, but you have your harness on. You know that the ride is going to end, you know, in 60 seconds. You know that once the ride ends, you're going to get off and then you're going to go out into the park and go have lunch or something. There's a sense of safety, but exhilaration as well. And I think that's important. Um, it's entertainment and exactly going back to why entertainment is so valuable because it takes us from our lives and escapes us to something that inspires us, that, that really lifts us up. You know, it can really do anything. So going back to romance, romance, since it has that guaranteed happily ever after, or at least it should, um, then it's telling you, here, come with me on this roller coaster. And at the end, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to put that harness on you. And then you can go off to the sunset. So that is why it is the literature of hope, because it, it really um, encompasses that. But on top of that, what it does is that because romance is structured in a way to push the character, and that is super important, it gives us hope for ourselves. So what do I mean by this? You know, when we come to like epic fantasies, we always want a character arc. A characters are what push the story. However, when it comes to romance, we are focusing on two different characters and we're focusing on how those two characters push themselves forward. So what does this mean? It means that they are facing their flaws and their fears against each other. So if you consider like what an antagonist does for a protagonist, you know, the antagonist brings out the character's flaws. But when it comes to um, romance, we have a really interesting play, a really interesting structure. It is a little bit different when it comes to those two characters who they have their flaws and with each other, they're facing those flaws. You know, it could be that the other person is actually the entire opposite of them. So that's kind of like a opposites attract story or where it could be that um that person is good at that other object so or the other skill. So they bring that person up with them. But either way, those two characters are going to explore the depths of their own character because of the other person. And what does that mean? It means that at the end of the story, um, when those people finally accept each other and love each other, uh, what it tells us as readers is like, hey, you you are awesome the way you are. And when you have a goal, you person there, um, you're going to reach it. But along the way, I love you just as you are. I accept you just as you are. Because um, when, the, when those two characters also push each other, then they look at themselves as well. And they're like, wow, okay, I am this person. And I fulfill this need for this other person. Therefore, I am I am good the way I am. I'm, I'm, I can be loved the way I am, right? And that is what that romance does for us. It really kind of gives us this, this hope of you can be loved the way you are. You know, it's really beautiful. I, I love that. You know, so, um, that is why it is the literature of hope. Okay. Secondly, you can explore multiple characters. Now I just talked about this lightly, but exploring multiple characters is super fun, especially for those fiction writers who they love to kind of like just dive into backstories and you're like, Oh, I want to talk, talk about this person and like their drug addiction. And I want to talk about this person and how they live in like an elvish fantasy world. You know, you can have all these different backstories. So what's cool about that is that you don't have to really be centered on one person. Um, usually, and it doesn't, it's not like a tried, it's not a, a rule, but you could explore or the multiple back and forth. So I love that in romance books when you have the um, uh, the one protagonist and then you have the other protagonist and you go inside their heads every other chapter. So you get to see like, you know, they're they're looking at the first protagonist and they're like, oh, I see this person. You kind of like get a feel for what they're feeling about them. Maybe they feel attracted to them and that's fun. And then there's miscommunication. So like, you know, the first protagonist does something and the second protagonist thinks that it's like, oh my gosh, like they totally like dissed me. But the first protagonist was like, like I literally just like fell and like everything just went into shambles. So um, it's really culturally fun. Um, but also again, like you get to have that depth 
and this is really important too, I think, um, and this is uh, this is probably more of like a personal thing, but I think it can work really well within these books. When you get to that chance to explore different characters, um, it allows you to have characters that are beyond stereotypical value. So if you're writing a romance and it's coming from that a single point of view, and let's just use a female protagonist, um, for example, you know, just her single female protagonist and say you are a female writer. When you write in your male protagonist, you know, if if it is a male protagonist um, or a female protagonist on the other, the other side who is the opposing um, uh, love interest, when you write that person in, um, because you are writing from a single point of view and that point of view is probably closer to your own personal point of view than that other protagonist might seem flat. They might not have a lot of depth because they're kind of only coming in to fill in the plot. Um, and that's why um, if you get a chance to explore multiple characters, then it can be really helpful because you are pushing your own sense of awareness for that character's background. What are they gonna say? What are they gonna do? So that is how it can come in handy. All right, the next tip is that it can light you on fire. And really, like, I mean, I love this. So, like, I love writing romance. So, um, I will write romance in fantasy and contemporary. Um, I don't do historical. That's not my gig, but a lot of people do do that. Um, so, uh, what's cool about that is that if you love romance, you love reading romance, then it's going to be easier for you to write because you're like, oh my gosh, I want to... Um, I want to read this story. I want to read this romance story. So therefore, um, I'm, I'm going to write it and, and I'm so excited for it. So in other words, saying like, you know, you're going to write in the genre that you love. So it's going to push you forward and that's going to be like a fire under your butt. And I mean that, just getting you to finish your book, that in itself is a big win. Okay, then we have two more tips and then this tip and the next tip. Yes, the next tip is probably the biggest for me. So also, um, most people love romance. It's actually the highest grossing genre and um, of all the genres. And also it can outrank multiple genres put together. So, I mean, it is something to be said for like E.L. James and Stephanie Meyer, you know, um, uh, Twilight and Fifty Shades of Grey, um, Pride and Prejudice. I mean, uh, you know, the merits of some of those books, eh, you know, but Pride and Prejudice, right? That's awesome. <laughs> so personal opinion. Uh, but so in other words, what to say uh, is here is that it is a highly, highly in demand genre. Um, and why is that good for you? Because it means that you are not going to lack readers. There are so many different types of readers. And as I talked about in the beginning, I mean, you can have a plethora of genres and subgenres, you know, not only like in um, theme or, or like, you know, fantasy, historical, you know, those are its own categories. But then you can also go into subcategories such as um, what are the roles that the males are playing? Alpha, biker, fireman, and then and then again, going in different themes as in like um, savior or pregnancy or um, secret baby, you know, there's like all these different subgenres on there. And if you go into Amazon, and you just start to explore for different things that you might be interested in, you will find that the that the outlines on the sidebar for the department of the books goes like deeper and deeper and deeper, it keeps going to sub, sub levels. So in other words, don't feel discouraged that like, oh, no one's gonna be able to read my book or I won't get any beta readers. You will be able to find somebody because there are a lot of different people for a lot of different types of books. Um, so don't um, underestimate your type of genre. And lastly, and I absolutely, absolutely love this one. Um, and it, oh gosh, okay. So in other words, <laughs> it is a great way to work in and explore deep themes. Now that is something that I think a lot of people underestimate when it comes to romance. Now let me give you an example. I read a book by L. Kennedy and um, wow, it's called The Deal. I, just, I almost forgot the name for a second and I love this book. So typical romance um, takes place in the university. Uh, the characters are college students. Opposites attract ones more like the popular like kind of jock type and the, um, the female protagonist, you know, she's more of like, um, uh, what is the word for it totally blanking uh but more like introverted that was the word i was looking for introverted um shy you know um but more like him hey, to keep to myself she's a very strong character i love her um but y'all y'all and hey hopefully no trigger warning here um so i want to just frame that but she talks about Elle Kennedy. Um, her main female protagonist has dealt with, you know, a really hard past. And this is something that a lot of women face. Um, it's trauma, right? So when you have that traumatic background, you know, how do you push yourself forward? 
You know, that's an excellent question. How do you move on into a romantic relationship? You know, how do you um, become friends and trust other people? And these are really serious, um, thought-provoking conversations and questions. And I love that she explored this. Um, But what Elle Kennedy did is that she explored it as a subplot to the romance plot. So even though, you know, I was inside, you know, this character's head and, um, you know, feeling, you know, the empathy for her and and sympathy and all, you know, just feeling the feels, you're like, oh man, you know, but you're also being carried through that because of the sub, the subplot, because of the romance plot. Because that's the overarching thing. So it doesn't feel like, you know, you are, you know, watching like a Lifetime movie. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like those Lifetime movies where you're like, afterwards, you're like, oh, I feel really raw, you know? But it, it, it pulls you through. And at the other side of it, you're like, I read an excellent romance. And also I got to explore something different and new. Um, so that is by far, I mean, the number one reason why I love romance, because you can carry deeper messages and you don't even know it. It's like the the sugar with the um, cough medicine, like in Mary Poppins. It's like, here you go, spoonful of sugar with your cough medicine. Uh, there you go. Take it. You didn't even know it. All right. So y'all, that is um, the, uh, the top reasons why you should write romance. If you're like, I want to write romance, but I don't know if I should. Yes. I hope this convinced you. If you need help, you let me know. And don't forget, before we leave here, um, I have a masterclass coming up for new writers. So if you feel stuck, if you feel like you don't want to take that long to write your book, if you feel like, I just don't have time, I'm too tired, I can't do all of this, you know, hey, jump into my masterclass to find that. Go into my Instagram or go into some of the links here. It's on my link tree and essentially get a seat inside this masterclass. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about all of those things that are blocking you and also, um, you know, how we're going to push that forward, you know, because that's going to be super important. There there is a way for you to um, jump into the writing process and to not feel so overwhelmed. There is a way for you to jump to the writing process and feel like, oh, like um, I already kind of know what I'm doing. Therefore, every time I'm writing, I'm getting cleaner and cleaner and cleaner. So I don't have to do so many revisions and that can be really important. And also it's not going to feel like as if you're deterring yourself from the project because writing a book can take a lot of work and a lot of effort. So um, check out the masterclass. Also, you want accountability, check out the Patreon group. On Patreon, we have an accountability group where we show up and write. So invest in yourself. Remember, sometimes it takes uh, that push, that fire to jump in and get the accountability going. So you can find that on my Patreon as well. Don't miss out. Don't miss out on any other writing days because, you know, the more that you miss out on your writing hours, the farther away that book is going to be. And I don't want that for you. You know, you can write this. You deserve to write this. Remember, like, your book should not um, sit on your dreams, right? It should sit on a shelf someday. All right. So thank you all. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram um, because we've got a lot of content on there. I'm actually pushing on there a lot um, because it seems that a lot of people like that. Um, It's giving you tidbits, advice, things like that so you can move forward, write your book. All right. You know, thank you so much. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Don't forget to um, join us here. And hey, like, subscribe, all that stuff. And also with leave a review uh, because I love to hear from you guys. All right. Thank you. Y'all have a beautiful writing day. Go get them. Keep writing and believe in yourself. Hey there, writer. Thank you for listening to the How to Write a Book podcast with your host, Masir Valenzuela. If you like the show, we'd be happy if you left a review. For more information on writing and the writer's life, go to www.themasiel.com. That's www.themasiel.com. We'll see you on the other side.